So this session is around the new content view UI that is going live in Kettelo 4.3. This is a complete rewrite of the content view workflows from Angular to React. And for this presentation, we have Andrew, Maria, and myself to go with uh, most of the demo and stuff. All right, so for releases, uh, we turn on the new content view UI as an experimental feature before 4.0, but with 4.0, you can start having meaningful interactions with the new UI. So we have most of the pages available as read-only with very few actions like publish, promote, etc. cetera. Uh, they start appearing in releases 4.1, 4.2. So you'll start seeing features slowly as you upgrade. And with 4.3, the default CV UI has been switched to the new UI. And the old UI will stay on the legacy URL for, for a couple of releases. Uh, so that's timeline. And uh, so now we can hand it over to Maria to go over the uh, design process and methods that we implemented. Thank you, Samir. So we've been working on the redesign for almost two years, and I'm glad we finally get to the implementation phase, and today we can present it to you. Like some of you may ask, what took us so long? Uh, so let me enlighten our process a bit. So designing, or in this case, redesigning, is never a linear process. As a designer, you first need to understand current flow, the task users are trying to accomplish through a given UI, and how it influences also other parts of the product. Then you need to ask yourself, and not just yourself, as the UI wasn't built for you, very simple question. Does it make sense? Is it intuitive enough? As a designer, you may have your assumptions about the flow, your own ideas, how to improve, improve it. But all those have to be either conf uh, confirmed or refuted by actual users. And uh, during this process, during uh, redesigning content views, there was a lot of back and forth. And my uh, designing heart was broken many, many times. Uh, for example, the main index page was redesigned a couple of times to accommodate all user requests. Um, so, for example, um, sometimes you can come across uh, requests uh, from users which are not similar, actually, which are totally opposite. And you need to uh, make a design decision, even though it won't be uh, the best uh, design decision for all the users. Um, so what we did uh, to gather user feedback. So we shared it, uh, our designs and also our implementation in four main de uh, demos. Also, we created a polls on uh, many platforms. Uh, for example, we shared it in Twitter, in uh, Foreman community, and also in uh, many uh, chats we have for uh, Foreman. Also, we had uh, a lot of design walkthroughs with, customer, uh, with customers trying to understand their specific context and their needs. Um, current design that you are going to see in a minute is based on Patternfly 4 design system. And what I was trying to do was to be as consistent with insights pattern and insights logic as it's possible. So, Hopefully, uh, I got it right. If not, I will share my email and uh, you can send me your 
feedback or my contact information. And yeah, as I said, uh, my heart was already broken so many times. You don't, I don't have anything uh, to break. So be honest and Frank, thank you very much. So Samir, it's your time. All right, so with all that background, let's jump to the demo. So this is the new content view index page. Uh, you'll see a counter here, which also acts as a legend. So this icon is for composite content views throughout the UI. That means uh, a content view, which is a collection of other content views. And I have two content views here in the system, uh, which also have activation keys and hosts assigned, which you can see under the expandable column. Uh, I'll go ahead create a content view here. So let me do this. This is the new form. You can select if you want it to be a component view or a composite view. I'm going to create a component view here. Once you create that, you see the versions tab. It's empty because we haven't published it yet. Uh, the repositories tab has been uh, has been merged for all repository types and for added and not added repositories. So if you look at the old UI, we have all of these content types appearing as different tabs on the old UI. And this was fine, but we started adding more content types with Pulp 3, so this would this would not be a feasible design option. So the repositories page was merged. So you can see most of the uh, repositories here. I'll just use a Debian repository because we have so many folks from ATEX. Uh, let's add this repository. So now you can see the added label here. You can filter it out if you just want to see added and available repositories. All right, uh, let's walk through the publish workflow here. So this is the publish wizard that you see. Uh, you can add a description here. One neat feature that has been added is you can directly promote to different environments if you have to while you are publishing the content view. So I'll go ahead, add a couple here. Uh, takes you to the review page, shows you what environments you're trying to publish and promote that content view to. For this to finish. All right, once this is done, you should be able to see a new version here with all the packages that are created. And you can also promote versions directly from here. This is a similar interface where you select more environments that you want to promote that version too. So I'll just go ahead and do that. You'll see once the promote is done, it should refresh the page and show you all the environments that the version lives in. Uh, another flow here is to remove environments from versions. So we have the version one in all of these environments. Actually, let me move to a different content view here. Show that flow. All right, let's try to remove version one of this content view. So we have all these environments listed. Let's go through a flow where we have hosts and activation keys assigned. 
So if you select an environment which has hosts and activation keys, you will see a couple of new steps added to the wizard. And it will ask you to reassign affected hosts to a different content view. So we have several options here. Let's move on the hosts. So we have one host here. Let's move that to a different content view. We have a similar interface for activation keys. Let's move it to the same content view here. You can see a list of activation keys you're moving. Uh, this will take you to the review page. It will tell you what uh, environments the version will be removed from, where the content hosts and activation keys are being moved to. Let's remove this. All right. So this should have this removed from this version. Let's verify that. All right. We don't have any activation keys here, and we moved everything to content view three. Uh, the delete workflow is pretty similar. Uh, in case you had any, uh, let's try this. So it will list all the versions that the content view is in. If you're trying to delete a content view, it will take you through the same entire workflow to reassign hosts and activation keys. So it's fairly similar there. Uh, let's also create a composite CV quickly. Let's try this. With composite content views, instead of the repositories tab, you'll be seeing a content views tab where you'll see a list of all content views. This is fairly similar to the repositories tab that we saw earlier. And you can add and remove content views from here. And yeah, with that, I'll pass it on to Andrew to continue this. Thank you, Samir. I'll, uh go ahead and share my screen. Okay. And with the magic of the interwebs, you should see my new screen here. Great. Okay, so I'll be talking about uh, a few of the navigation differences between the old and new UIs, as well as a few differences you're going to see in the filters and the filter rules section, as well as the version details that'll be a little different between the old and new UI. So in front of you here, you're looking at my content view named Bop, and I have the old and new UI in front of you. And as Samir kind of mentioned, we have this unified attitude with the new tabs that we're showing you. So with repositories, no longer are you going to see repository types uh, and in this tab level, it's all unified together. And the same with filters. So if you have we, we have filters for all of these different types here, and they'll all be found underneath the filter tab. So you no longer have to navigate around for a specific filter. It will just be here, and you can just fill, you can just look at it by content type. And again, he briefly went over the repositories flow, but one uh, additional thing I will say is that if you look on the very far right side of the old UI, we do have a tasks tab. And that was eliminated because now when you're going to versions and making a publishing task, uh, this will be updated in real time. So you no longer have to publish, look at the task tab to find out, you know, where is that, where's that published task uh, right now? Uh, now you can just wait here and this will be updated in real time as you go through that publish flow um, right within the UI on the table. So looking at the two, you know, there's quite a few changes, but I would say the overall design change is that this is much simpler to deal with. Um, yeah. Now there's quite a few quality of life things. I won't go over all of them, but as an example, if you go to the um, old UI and you're going to make an edit, if I was to make a bunch of changes here and here and maybe click this and hit save, not all of these things would save. 
Um, so to get around those kind of little finicky, like buggy issues, all we've done is made it so that you can only really edit a single item at a time. And in cases of having like Boolean values, like self dependencies or import only, it's just been switched over to a toggle. So just to give you an insight into some of those ideas that Maria was talking about, like, does this make sense? And yeah, we've updated those there. Okay, now for a brief example of some other simplifications that we've made. So I like dark mode, so apologies for those that this looks a little dark on your screen, but the top is the same uh, URL as the bottom is. The bottom is the new UI here, and this is the old UI. So we've tried to dramatically simplify how the URL has been made. This does mean uh, like the address in the browser for your different locations. So this is a, a filter rule, by example. Now, the new UI dramatically simplifies that. We're using a hashing system. This does mean that for those users that want to or that have a bunch of bookmarks, you will have to update them. Um, but that simplification does help quite a bit, I think. OK, so let's walk through filters briefly here. So one of the first differences you're going to notice for errata specifically is we have two different types of errata filters. Um, we have errata by date and type and errata by ID. And errata by ID, I think, is similar to the old flow, if I remember correctly. So we can open one of them up. So similar to how with repositories, um, you have added, not added, um, or with components, uh, component views, you have added, not ad added for the composite view. Um, we've kept that same type of mentality here. So if you're coming in and you're wanting to add a certain errata by a certain ID, you could just make a selection and add that errata. Now, one slight difference in, um, in the UI that you will notice again is that before you would have a tab here um, that would say affected repositories. Now that tab by default is now hidden and you have to go to this drop down to find that. So if you are you know wondering where is that if you wanted to apply a subset, you now will have to go to this drop down to find it. Um, just to another piece of simplification that we've made here. Okay, going back to filters. Um, now, if we go to errata by date range. So if you have added errata, um, you can now look for certain types or make a filter by certain types. If you only wanted to add enhancements, for example, um, you do have to select a certain type here or all three, or you can do it by you know the issue date or the updated date and set a particular filter by date. Um, so this could be particularly useful or errata specifically. OK. Um, yeah, I think I've gone over filters a little bit here. Um, now I'll talk a, briefly about our version details page and how that now looks. So for that, I'll switch over my view. So for this, I'll go here. OK, so here's the new UI. I'm looking at the versions tab. I'm going to click into version 3. <clears throat> and I'm going to do the same thing over here on the old UI. So if I go to the versions tab and I click into 3.0, I have this long set of horizontal tabs here. Um, now, we kind of did the same unification as we did um, within the content views themselves, where we combine all of those repositories together on the new UI. So here, you, you're going to see quite a few uh, less tabs. And where it makes sense, we're combining them together and unifying them. So in the case of repositories, for example, we do have them all here, unified under one place. And yeah, not a lot else is dramatically different. Um, 
if you were to look between the two, but we are just trying to make it a little bit simpler to read and to deal with. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Um, just to go over a few of the points from DUI. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask us or bug Maria because she's always available. Thanks. Thank you, Andrew, Samir, Maria. Uh, has anyone any questions, any comments? It looks like a, a lot of work has gone into this, a lot of heartache as well. Um, it's a huge undertaking. Any Anyone? Anything to add? So is there anything in the old UI that you could do that you can't have the new? Oh, I forgot to mention with 4.3, we are enabling lifecycle management support for Ansible collections. That was one thing which was available in the backend, but not exposed on the UI in the old UI. So that is something you can do with Ansible collections, I think. Uh, there also is support for other new content types that are being added, but I don't want to jump ahead of myself. There's also a number of bulk actions that are not available on the old UI that are available on the new UI. So that does streamline some workflows. That's great. There's a lot of new features, looks like then. Yeah. Thank you, Bartha. Anyone? else so thank you very much for all that work it looks very very good and i i'm really i'm f looking forward to to give it a try and test it um one question as always and i already saw that you mentioned um some debian stuff so if anything is um needs to be done for debian support for these uis and um, please let us know um, so that we are, so Debian support is um, available in the very first version of that um, new interface. Yeah. So from the previous demo, immediately the content view filters jumped out to me because that will need to be implemented in the new UI. But otherwise, we have tried to maintain uh, feature parity between the old and new UI, but let us know if we missed anything. Okay, I guess if you're in a content view, on the left side, you s I saw there is um, um, some uh, some buttons for RPM packages, modules, streams. If you have Debian content in that content view, there would be also a button for and Debian packages, I guess. So for Debian packages, uh, the content information will appear. Uh, I hope you can see my screen here. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I went to the, oh, sorry. That, but yeah, I think I deleted that content view as part of the demo, but it will appear in this additional content column on the Debian packages. These packages and Irata have separate columns. I think it came from uh, UX feedback from Maria. And the other content types are consolidated in the additional content uh, set. And Debian content will also have a separate uh, sub tab inside version details. Yeah, so Samir, I think uh, what you're saying is everything that we had before with Debian content is there now. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, Doc. Has anyone else any last question? Hey, out of curiosity, is there any hope? 
for uh, adding some texture so that for whenever like a content view is created or whatnot, it's got an underscore like CV or something along those lines as far as what actually shows up in the database. So at least that's what I tell all my customers to make sure they have their happy uh, syntax sugar. So when they write their uh, playbooks or, or, you know, whatever, whenever they're dealing with, they actually have some syntax sugar so they know what they're talking about. Does that make sense as far as what I'm asking? Uh, that was really hard to hear. Uh, could you repeat that? Yes. Uh, I was wondering, is there any hope of maybe having some syntax sugar? I know that uh, at least most of my customers that I deal with satellite, I usually say, you know, like if it's a content view or something like that, have a like an underscore CV or something like that, as far as what the best practice is. So that way, when they start scripting it, either in um, Ansible or on um, Hammer, they know what they're talking about, as far as when they actually write the playbooks or uh, they're doing their Hammer scripts, if that makes sense. So as far as API, Hammer and scripting go, not much has changed in the API. So the API itself is backward compatible. There are some uh, additional features that have been added to the API, like support for promoting while publishing and promoting to multiple environments at once. Those can be leveraged if you're scripting. But yeah, I would, my, my question is like if auto, automatically they yeah, have the syntax sugar there. So that if it's a content view, it has like a, at the very end of the statement, it says underscore CV or something like that. I don't know if that would matter or not, but. Uh, I'm not sure I'm getting that question. Uh, oh, I'm just, just wondering. I mean, it's, it's no big deal. Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe. Possibly. So what, what do you want the syntax sugar to do? That, that's the question I think we're having. Yeah, I mean, I just want to, I mean, as far as the syntax sugar, so a lot of customers get confused about what things are when they start writing scripts or whatnot. And in order to get around that uh, problem or friction or so to speak, I basically say, you know, at the very end of whatever the term is, like if it's a content view, add an underscore CD here, you know, so they know it's a content view or if it's a composite content view or something along those lines. So when they actually write their playbook or hammer script, they know what item or variable they're dealing with. Does that make so, some better sense? Yeah, so then are you asking, is there going to be a way to enforce that in the UI? Or is this- It, it, might, the API? it might be something to, to think about, maybe not for Satellite 7 or the next version, but somewhere down the line. Because a lot of times people get confused about what things are when they start writing scripts or whatnot. Although they should know, but you know, humans are humans. They're not that smart. It's easy okay. enough to do a typo. That's basically all I'm saying. If that makes sense. I think it makes sense. Um, yeah, we'll think about that. I mean, if you get pushed back from customers and you think it'll help, maybe RFE will make it easier for us to process it. That's a good idea. Um, thank you all very much for your questions and for this great session. Uh, I will just stop the recording.